I'm Chris Hartman, director of the Fairness Campaign. It's really a grassroots civil rights campaign founded upon two basic principles. One is to dismantle systemic racism because we inherently believe that racism is classism, is sexism, is homophobia, is that as long as one form of oppression persists, that no form of oppression is ever going to desist, you know. Uh, and then to that end as well, we seek comprehensive civil rights laws for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender folks. Primarily in Louisville, which we were founded to do, to get an anti-discrimination fairness ordinance for our city, which would say that you can't fire someone from their job, deny them a place to live, or kick them off a bus out of a restaurant, or deny them any public accommodation. These days, since we've got that law in the city, and we've also got it in Lexington and in Covington, we really seek, through our work with the Statewide Fairness Coalition, to pass a comprehensive statewide anti-discrimination fairness law, which would simply amend Kentucky civil rights statutes to include sexual orientation and gender identity or expression. In the 2012 election, there were four ballot initiatives addressing same-gender marriage across the nation, and by God, we won every single one of them. And I think it's largely because of social media, it's because of the dissemination of information, it's because people in rural areas don't feel so isolated because they have that digital connection mm -hmm. with other people who are like themselves, and so they feel more emboldened to come out in their own communities. We know that that's what changes people's hearts and minds. This is the primary thing that I tell folks, um, and I hope they take it to heart, that just staying informed about the issues is the most important thing that they can do. It's the only way that we defeated the 2009 anti-adoption bill. That was really the game changer in our state. We flooded the Senate President's office with thousands of phone calls, to the tune of which he dropped the bill before it came to the Senate floor, and that had never happened before. And that was historic, and that completely altered the way that LGBT politics got played in Frankfurt, because for the next three years, 2010, 2011, 2012, there was not a single piece of anti-LGBT fairness legislation filed in either the Kentucky State House or Senate. They didn't even try. That's what is beautiful about Louisville is that Louisville is willing to try something new and if it works or if they like it, they will run with it and own it and keep it and make t-shirts about it and call it weird and do all the wonderful things that Louisville, you know, does. One of my friends had accidentally come out in the Courier Journal, and the faculty and administration really stepped up to protect not just him, but sort of the cadre of, of openly gay students uh, in the school. So by the time I came around to coming out, I felt really rather comfortable at school, and it was great. Conversely, when I stayed in Louisville to go do my undergrad at Bellarmine, things were not very good. Um, it was almost like being thrown back into the closet and it was far more of a struggle to come out there. And I'm like, all I do is wear business casual every day. Like, what, what is it that's so flaming about me on, on this campus except that sometimes I wear an overcoat? But that's when I started to come to understand that it affects other people. When I see people really get engaged in the process and, and find their own power, that's what's exciting, seeing someone really sort of come into how powerful of a human being that they are and what that can do and change and be. Well, that makes my heart race. Somewhere in the end of time